So hello everyone, welcome to another module, a basic module of entrepreneurship and corporate entrepreneurship. I'm Iraklis Agevlasetis from the National Documentation Center of Athens. So, what we will be discussing actually in the basic module of entrepreneurship is how and what exactly a business model is, how we can present a business case an and an enterprise through schematics, through a business model. So, business model is something that is quite uh, loosely used in the business world without anyone really knowing exactly what this word means. Business man managers use this term quite often, but they lack complete understanding of this word. And there are many types of models that they are referring to. A business model is not the revenue model. A revenue model is what incomes to a company comes from. A business model, again, is not the operating model of a business. In order to be able to identify exactly what the mo business model is, we will have to look at some diagrams. This is a model of architecture. This is quite easier to understand. And we use this model in order to present buildings or other physical structures. This is another. This is a network model of a computer. And we can use it in engineering or in electrical engineering to showcase how a network can be built. And this is a quite more complicated process model that can be used to put into paper a more complex process of whatever this might be, a flowchart actually. Diagrams, charts, blueprints, building blocks, they can all be used in order to model something, either big or small. So in this manner, a business model is something that describes the rationale of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. This definition comes from Alexander Osterwelder's book, which is called Business Model Generation, a handbook for visionaries, game changers, and challengers. So, this is the kind of schematic model that helps us gain the complete picture of an organization, of a business, from a high-level perspective. It's a framework that helps us understand how the different entities of a business come all together and how they interlink between them. So, let's see some types of business models to further try and understand what these business models are. The first and most common business model is the selling business model. Someone may be selling a simple product. So if you, for example, sell soap or software as uh, a bundle, then this is something that you sell, a very easy to understand business model. But you may also sell a service. This is not something that has to do with the product itself, but something that you provide to the actual customer. And maybe you may be selling a subscription, like a magazine subscription. A second business model is the licensing business model. This is more common to inventors. An inventor may have a patent and he may not want to commercialize with it, but he may give it out to a company and the company makes profit and revenue from selling this invention and some money goes back to the original inventor. A third business model is the advertising business model, which is quite common in the TV, for instance, sector, or in web advertising model. This is just an extension of the traditional media broadcast advertising model. And sometimes there can also exist some hybrid business models. So, for instance, you may go to the movies and you may watch a movie. This is a service that is provided to you and there may be some advertising before the movie. So this is an advertising business model. And maybe you can also have a bundle with some food or beverage or another snack. And this would be a product business model. So this is a more complicated but can be categorized as a hybrid business model. 
So its business model has some positive and some negative aspects. The selling business model is easier to define. It's quite easy to scale when products are not involved or when products are standardized. So this is the only case when it is easy to scale. But the key to the growth is sales and distribution channels. So selling business models, the first three columns in this table, can and may refer to huge companies uh, and they can be very profitable business models and they are the most common but actually the web and the web economy have also given access to new subscription business models that are more and more scalable and they have great potential of growth over time and then there are the licensing business models which are can be quite profitable but the licensee is not sure about the profit that he will have. And the risks complicated can be higher in, this, uh, in these cases. The subscription business models can be appropriate for companies that may be selling information or providing software or other IT examples. And they can involve different types of, uh, of risks, they can be cheap to start, but expensive in the market later on. So, how can we put all these pieces together? Or how can we represent all these business cases in one framework? Here it is, the business model canvas. This is nine adjacent building blocks that are fitting together in a puzzle and they can give you the entire picture of a whole business, how it works and how it relates. These nine building blocks uh, from a quick overview are the customer segments, the value proposition, the channels of distribution, the revenue streams, the customer relationships, key resources, key activities, partner network and cost structure. And these give you the what your business is providing, how your business is providing these services, and how do money come in or out. And we'll go slowly and see each of the nine building blocks, what exactly does it mean, and how can you use this framework in order to describe your own enterprise or your own startup idea. So let's start with the what. And the very first thing is to identify your customer. So let's go to the right hand corner and see the customer segments. The customer segments defines the different groups of people or organizations your company or your business serves. These uh, customer segments may exist in different markets. They may refer to, for instance, to a mass market, one large group which may be comprising of only one segment, or maybe to a niche market, or to a slightly different customer groups. So this could be referring to a segmented market or maybe even a diversified market with multiple unrelated customer segments or multi-sided markets. So, in these cases, you have to put multiple or all the different types of customers your business is serving in bullet points in this building block. So, once you have defined all your customers, you have to explain which value proposition you may bring to each different type of customer segments. So, the value proposition describes the bundle of products or services that create value for a specific customer segment. The questions that you have to answer are two. What value do you deliver to the customer and what exactly are you offering to each different customer segment? And this may have to do with qualitative criteria, such as a new product or a better performing product or a better design in your products or a customizable product 
or maybe this criteria, this value that you're bringing to your customers may be quantitative. So, for instance, you may, have, you may be offering a lower cost of ownership for this product, a cheaper price. You may be doing something that has re less risks related to this product, or maybe just a more convenient and more usable product. And now that you know what value do you bring to its customer segment, you have to find and identify the channels that your company communicates with and reaches your customers. So, the key questions you have to answer is through which channels are your customers reached? How can we integrate all these channels together and what measures define which channels work best for our customers and our products? These channels can help you raise awareness for the product or help customers evaluate your value proposition and maybe allow them to purchase your product and thus deliver your value proposition to the right target group with the proper way. And this comes to the customer relationships and what types of relationships your company wants to establish with each specific customer segment. These customer relationships are always driven by motivations in order to further acquire new customers or retain your cu current customer base or use your customer base to upsell new products or services. In the next part of the business model canvas, we will discuss the bottom segment. How does the money come into the organization? So, let's see. On the bottom right-hand corner, we have the revenue streams, which represent the money that a company generates from its, again, customer segment. The key questions you have to answer in order to be able to identify the revenue streams is what is the value that customers are really willing to pay for and what do they currently pay for to your competitors, for instance, and how will this change in the future or are there ways to generate further new revenue streams like buying assets or retenting customers or new subscription models or licensing or advertising, all these different business models that we were discussing earlier. And the types of revenue streams can be reflecting transaction revenues resulting from one-time customer payments or recurring revenues, which may be resulting from ongoing payments that either deliver a value proposition to customers and or provide post-purchase customer support. This may be related, as you probably understand, to the subscription model. How does this take place? Let's try to identify the three building blocks in this corner of the business model canvas. So, the first one are the key resources, which describes the most important assets required to make your specific business model work and succeed. These resources may be physical, they may be financial, they may be intellectual, or even human capital. And the key resources can be owned or leased by the company, or they may even be acquired from your key partners, which will be identified in another building block. And exactly what are the key activities that you will be having to do as a business? This describes the most important things a company must do to make its business model work. It's, for instance, for a PC manufacturer like Dell, the key activities could include very different things from a, like another company, like a PC manufacturing company may include supply chain management and production manufacturing. But for a consultancy firm, these key activities may be including a totally different activity like problem solving or creating and generating studies. So these key activities will have to do with production, with problem solving or networks, matchmaking platforms and software. 
And this comes down to identifying your key partnerships, the network of suppliers and partners that are absolutely required to make your business model work. These types of partnerships may be strategic alliances, they may be joint ventures, or buyer and supplier relationships, like where you buy your products from or your first resources. And they may also be related to competition, like strategic partnerships between competitors. What is the motivation between these partnerships? This is the key question that you will have to answer, because they may be useful for optimizing and creative economies of scale, but they may be completely required in order to acquire particular resources or activities, or they may be required in order to reduce some potential risks and uncertainty for the future or for your competition. And this comes to the money out, which is the cost structure actually of your business model. And this describes all different costs that may be included or required for your operation. And there are cost-driven or value-driven business models. Costs should and may be calculated relatively easy after defining your key resources, your key activities, and all your key partnerships. And you have to know that cost-driven business models will focus on minimizing costs whenever possible. Whereas value-driven business models, they are less concerned with cost implication and instead they focus on value creation, such as premium value propositions and high degree of personalized services. This is related to the value-driven business models. So this is a quick overlook of all the nine different building blocks required for a business model canvas. And it's time for you to go and reflect on what has been discussed in this presentation and study. The first thing is to revise from the book of Dr. Alexander Osterwalder, the 72 pages which describe all these nine different building blocks with concrete examples. And maybe you should also see some blogs on the web. Steve Blank's blogs categories that are related to business modeling or Eric Ries blog posts on lean startup and customer development in order to further dr drill down on these building blocks that are related to customers and to the value proposition. And also, don't miss out on Steve Brown's Innovators Traction blog. So, that's all for now. See you in another session.